first met Roseanne Sedoya just three weeks after she lost her right leg above the knee in the bombings at last year's Boston Marathon. When we visited her at Spalding, she was single, on leave from work, and learning to walk again. When we last spoke just days before this year's marathon, a lot had changed for Roseanne, and she was facing the difficult decision of whether to return to the marathon. I feel as though that I have to be there, because if I don't go this year, I, I probably won't ever go again. So I'm hoping that if I go this year, I can reclaim it. And Roseanne Sedoy is here, joining us for the first time in the studio. It's great to have you here. Thank you for having I feel like me here. Like adopted you. Yes, it's nice semester. being here. Great. So, how, how did you? What did you end up doing on Marathon Day? Um, I did wake up anxious um, over the past month of kind of running around and doing all the events and things. Um, I thought it would be a good day to stay home and mm. kind of clean my apartment, but um, I decided that that could wait and. Um, I had family coming in to pick me up and bring us over to um, the marathon, over mm -hmm. to Boyl Boylston Street. So I sucked it up and went over. Um, originally, I was going to go to town where the BAA yeah. and the One Fund had um, provided for us. But I'd also heard that Boylston Street was not allowing any more spectators. So I wasn't sure how to get to that location. So I conveniently texted my contact at Spalding and ended up um, with the Spalding uh, people at Mandarin and oh. ended up watching it there that along nice the race route. To. And did you feel okay? I did. Um, I, I, it was as if I was kind of watching TV, mm. um, live TV maybe, so to say, because we parked at the Prudential. We went up into the Prudential and we went in through that way. Yeah. So it wasn't like I was ever out mm -hmm. in the crowd. So I was sort of removed from the electricity of all the people on the street and the energy that was going on that normally goes on with the marathon that I'm normally walking through. So it was definitely a different way to watch it. But I think it was good in a way that I was there. I was able to observe that nothing happened. It was extremely uneventful. I did see uh, many of those mm -hmm. that were running on my team run down Boylston Street, which was fantastic to see. And a few of them saw me in the window, which was fantastic. <laughs> I started to cry when I, no. my cousin came down first and I got to see him. And um, it was just very touching. And I, I kind of want to do over, <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> you know, because I know it's all OK. Yeah. But um, there's next year, and you know I'll I'll decide at that point how to attempt it. But I don't see any reason why I would not go back next year. Are you glad to have that over with the anniversary? So happy. It it seems as though that was kind of like a goal, not just for me, but for many people. And um, I'm just thrilled to have it over with. I've spent the last week um, kind of down and out with a head cold and just recuperating from all of the activities, but I'm looking forward to kind of getting back to life in general mm -hmm. on a normal basis. So we were talking a few minutes ago and you were saying one of the big issues for you still remains clothing, kind of how to put it together and shoes what fits. and what fits. And, and, and um, like on a day like today, it's a little gray and, and yeah. cold out. So, you know, boots are heavy and uh, they're kind of a pain. The, the socket isn't fitting right, so to add any more weight to it. So it's kind of a challenge still, and I'm, I'm working through that. And that's one of probably one of my biggest challenges is um, of getting clothing that fits and looks appropriate with yeah. being above the knee. And being a woman, I mean, you want to be able to wear skirts and dresses. We've talked about that. And yes. Shoes that are you can't always wear sneakers. <laughs> No, I never would wear them before unless I was working out or running. And now, unfortunately, they're a favorite pair mm -hmm. of shoes because it's just easier to walk in and more comfortable. But slowly and surely, I'm going through and, and figuring out what works and what doesn't. So we teased the audience a little bit and said you were single when I first met you. And now, this is a great story, you and Mike Materia. Yes. Um, he's one of the first responders that helped me that day. Um, he... Uh, helped load me into the back of the police transport vehicle that took me to the hospital and he brought me to the hospital and he ended up going back to work that day and worked 24 hours and then came back to the hospital to make sure that I'd lived. Um, I didn't see him that day but my family and friends automatically adopted him so to say and um, and then he kept coming back to visit and we just formed a great bond and and 
romance turned out. I hear you invited him over to your apartment to help you practice the fire escape. That's a good one, Roseanne. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sadly, but it was true. Although we still have yet to do it. Yeah, um, yeah exactly. It didn't get to that. We didn't get to that. I'd fallen the day before and I was in a lot of pain. So we do still talk about it yeah. and, um, and we just haven't gotten there yet. But it, it should happen. Uh-huh really, especially where I live and all the buildings are so close to each other. It would be smart, but it was a good line. Yeah, that is a good line. And he, I, we should point out, is, is also a member of Engine 33, Ladder 15. He's on Ladder 15. Which is where the two firefighters uh, died yes. just a couple months ago. Yes, sadly. and um, They were first responders also. Yes, Mike Kennedy was. Um, Mike Kennedy had worked on me that day. He had put me on the backboard um, before I got put into the, the police transport vehicle. Mm-hmm. And I had a chance... Um, and the pleasure of meeting him on a few occasions, and he was just really a great person, um, full of life. And I met Ed Walsh once, and um, he was just so nice. And I know my, Mike Materi really looked up to him a lot. Well, that's a great story. We've really enjoyed getting to know you. I've and enjoyed it. Thank stay, you, Emily. Plan to stay in your life. I hate to tell you, but you're not going to be able to get rid of us. <laughs> <laughs> I'll take it. All right, Roseanne Sedoya, thanks so much for being with us. Thank you.